Well, hello and welcome to episode 11 of our front yard garden here in the uh, South Carolina upstate. It is April 12th, 2024. Absolutely beautiful day. Skies are crystal blue. Um, right now it's about 65 degrees. A little breezy, but just about as nice as you can imagine for a uh, morning. And uh, we're going to do another morning video here. Uh, even though we get some, some uh, shadows when we do these, I think uh, the angle of the sun is really nice to show off the color on some of these brighter flowers like what we're seeing here in our mailbox bed. So <clears throat> we're at a point now where we're really making the transition from early spring into mid and even late spring uh, with some of the flowers that have come out. We've, we've had some things finished up in the past week and other things uh, just getting going. So we'll, uh, we'll get started here. And uh, as always, we we start in the mailbox bed. We've got our clematis, which we re, uh, retrained to go up over the box. Uh, you can barely actually get into the box now, unfortunately. We have to keep moving this around so that the uh, mail people can do their deliveries. That's kind of important, unless it's bills, in which case we can just keep it covered. But uh, other things still uh, doing well here are pansies. Um, they've really done well all through uh, the winter. This particular yellow type was fairly resistant to the deer problem that we had over the winter, and uh, they're still blooming away. And they'll probably give us another couple of months of flowers until the uh, weather gets really hot. And we still need to do a little bit of our spring cleanup here. We still have some of the uh, vinca branches from last season, and uh, we may get some more uh, vinca coming up from seed. We've, we've kind of made the decision to uh, uh, minimize the, the, the amount of work that we have to do this year with annuals, so we're, we're uh, hoping to see what will come back from seed. And we do have a fair number of things, uh, digitalis and vinca, um, that will return um, and, and a couple other things along with all of our perennials. So uh, it should be interesting. It'll be a little different for us. We've always had at least some uh, annuals, uh, usually quite a few, but this year we're going to kind of experiment a little bit. Uh, as time goes by, you want to try to do less work on the garden than, than more, and it's it, at times it gets a little overwhelming. Now we do have one tulip left in this garden. Um, beautiful uh, pale white and lavender flower. It'll probably give us a day or two and then uh, that's about it for the for the uh, tulips in this area. We have a couple others that we're going to see in a couple of minutes, but uh, for the most part, the tulips are about done. That's uh, around here. That's an early spring uh, flower, usually uh, primarily March, which is interesting. Where we came from in Ohio, it was more of a, a May flower. It came out well after the daffodils, but here they uh, come out uh, kind of on the tail end of the daffodil cycle and uh, so they're just about finishing up now but we've, we've had a really good crop of, of tulips. We couldn't really grow tulips in the north because we had a, a huge deer problem there. We lived out in the in the country to some extent and we had a lot of deer and they would just devastate the, the flowers. So over here the tulips that are done, pansies, one Asiatic lily is growing here colored before too long. And then uh, we have a, a bright purple clematis. The, the one over the mailbox is a Giacomini, so it's going to be a kind of a darker bluish purple. This is a more of a magenta type. Uh, I'm not good with the names, but uh, I just know they're pretty. We also have one Dianthus here in this bed that uh, has been doing really well. We have a, a number of things that are sort of peaking right now and a few things that are just past their peak. And along those lines, we have our cat, Furball, coming to say hi. Hi, Furball. And uh, actually, that's not Furball, that's Orion, as in the constellation Orion. Orion, he doesn't usually get outside. I'm not sure how he did, but uh, I think he regrets that decision already. Anyway, we have our creeping flocks. They've kind of peaked, they're on their way uh, down. We'll probably have another couple of weeks of color there, but uh, this was the best that we ever had in all the years that we've been gardening, which is now about 28 years, and uh, actually 29, I think. And uh, 
so we've been really happy with those and uh, as, as they say all good things come to an end tulips are all done in this bed but our pansies are doing well uh, we had a big rabbit problem and deer problem over the winter uh, these got uh, chewed down to the ground but they're doing really well now they're getting sprayed every week we have some uh, lavender colored uh, dianthus here we've got our <coughs> uh, petite knockout rose getting ready to start blooming very soon probably this week uh, should give us a lot of, a lot of uh, nice red roses that's about as big as it gets it's roughly uh, two and a half to three feet tall and uh, it, uh, it really was was uh, very prolific last year with lots of red flowers. Um, we have a couple in the backyard <clears throat> that don't get as much sun. This one is in the direct sun. And uh, so uh, it does very well. <clears throat> Over here we have more dianthus, the dark pink ones. They are in full bloom right now. Dianthus are really cool. They go through a number of cycles. And this particular batch will die down a little bit. And then they'll come back couple more times but they'll uh, continue to, to uh, bloom up until we get into uh, you know a really hard frost around November or December tulips in this area completely done uh, even the the ones that came up a little bit later um, this is the first year that we put a lot in this bed and overall I was very happy with it I think my wife was a little bit disappointed she'd put in more bulbs and some of them did get eaten and, and dug out but for the most part it it, uh, it went pretty well we also have some more pansies back in here kind of lost amongst all the dianthus but uh, they're doing very well um, in the back here we have a climbing rose that's giving us some trouble the, the plant itself isn't really giving us trouble but the the, uh, uh, the, the uh, trellis keeps falling over every time we have a stiff wind and we had a thunderstorm last night actually I had several thunderstorms last night uh, Hopefully you're safe wherever you were. There was a big storm system that came through the south. And uh, this thing keeps blowing over at least a couple times a week. And it, last year this this uh, climbing rose was doing really well. Um, it's been really prolific in terms of flowers. It has a couple of flowers on it right now. But the plant itself doesn't look that healthy. Uh, I, it doesn't have black spot. I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. Uh, the repeated falls may be the issue. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure. But uh, if this continues to be a problem, we may have to just dig it out and start all over again with the trellis a little further out and uh, stabilized a little bit more in the ground. But there's a limited amount that we can do right now because the, the flower itself, the rose and all its roots, are not that far from the house. We didn't really plan this out because we didn't really know what to do with it. Over here we've got uh, Russian sage. <clears throat> it's still a month or two away from giving us flowers, little uh, lavender-colored flowers. Pretty, pretty uh, delicate uh, plant. Um, we've got iris over here that are bearded iris that are in bloom. More uh, pansies through here, and then really what's what's uh, catching the eye the most in this bed are all the clematis that are growing up the trellis along with the climbing roses. Now these climbing roses uh, have been very prolific in terms of growth and leaves. And you can see them all you know, halfway up the uh, front of the house, but they don't have anything to cling to, so they can't keep going. If they did, if we had something up there uh, attached to the brick, they could probably go all the way up to the second floor. But we are getting a couple of really pretty flowers right now. And uh, this one was not all that prolific last year. Uh, there's a, a yellow one in there too. Usually it doesn't give us more than a, a couple of flowers through the whole season. But uh, really the clematis has sort of taken over this bed and is, is really the, the primary uh, eye-catching plant right now at least. And another iris that's getting ready to bloom. Then we've got our pink and blue uh, hydrangeas over here. They're starting to put out a few buds. Uh, flower buds so it'll be <clears throat> maybe another month or so before they're in bloom they're absolutely beautiful I'll show off um, again our uh, as always our lemon and orange and Meyer lemon trees not sure exactly what they're gonna do I haven't seen any uh, 
flower buds on either of the big ones. The Meyer lemon is supposed to be prolific and uh, it, it had uh, buds coming out pretty early, in fact, earlier than the uh, leaves came out this spring. But the, for some reason, the, the most of the buds just fell off. And in fact, that one just fell off right there. They, um, th th there's some aspect of this. I don't know if it's the soil or what it is. I've fertilized them. They certainly get plenty of water. They have just not, not really done that well. Over here, we have this uh, little woodland flower. I don't know the name of it. It would appear to be related to uh, lilies of the valley, except it's not white. It's more of a pink color. Beautiful little flower. Um, not really fragrant like lilies of the valley, but it's it's a uh, really pretty uh, spring flower, as is typical for a shaded area. And we've got a juga here. Not really just a little ground cover plant that puts out these delicate little purple flowers. Really pretty. Uh, in the background here, we have our uh, viburnum, really one of the, the most outstanding plants that we have in the entire uh, garden when they are fully in bloom. And we have more of them in the background there. Uh, we've got pansies here and uh, <coughs> a lot of things that have finished up in this, in this uh, area are hyacinths, daffodils, tulips, all done. And uh, we do have a group of pink uh, snapdragons that are doing really well. Um, put these in about two years ago. And uh, I put several all along this uh, border. And only that group over there in this particular one have come back. For whatever reason, the ones in between have not come back. But these are doing really well. We haven't uh, deadheaded from last year. Uh, they would probably look a lot better if we did, but they're still doing really well, putting out a lot of flowers. And again, this is the viburnum from the backside. Now, I thought I would show off one other thing, and it's unfortunately where it is, it's sort of lost, uh, or, or at least obscured a little bit. Um, these are the only other tulips that we have in the front yard. Um, beautiful red tulips, very, very simple, uh, very basic. Uh, classic tulips, but they're uh, gorgeous, and uh, those are about the last ones that we're going to have in the front yard. Again, the, the viburnum over in this bed, really doing well. We probably will get another week or two of those, and then they'll be done. I, I would say easily we've got about three times more flowers this year than we did last year. Uh, we had a gardener two years ago that uh, chopped back all the branches that are sticking up that are covered with flowers, uh, and his, his thinking, I think, was really more to encourage the, the base of the plant to grow more. But this is where the flowers are, and that's what I want. That's, that's what we have these plants for. It's not, uh, not to just have another bush. So I'm, I'm happy that we've let them grow like this and haven't chopped all that back. Um, <clears throat> other things in this bed are azaleas, which are almost fully in bloom. We have uh, this one, which is really cool because it has both light pink and dark pink on the same plant. And then um, kind of the same thing up here. We have uh, one that gives a kind of a more of a coral color here. This one actually has been out for uh, a few weeks. It's about done. And then <clears throat> over here, we have some different types of irises, Dutch irises, bearded iris, hostas. Um, I think we've got everything in this bed except day lilies. We have a, a big uh, butterfly bush. Um, not sure exactly what to expect with this one. It's gotten so big in the past couple of years. Right now, it's about eight feet tall. Um, it does have some growth down by the base, but I don't. I, I, I didn't feel like it flowered as well as it had in the past. Um, and right now, it doesn't look like it's getting as many leaves as uh, we would like. So this is one we probably need to chop it back and let it kind of start all over again with the, the new growth down by the, the bottom. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, sometimes we, we, don't, <laughs> we don't necessarily research these things. We just kind of do what seems right at, at the time. <clears throat> then in here in the front, we have five knockout roses doing really well. They're not fully in bloom, but they will be soon, probably in another week or two. If you look closely, there are buds everywhere. 
So these things are just gonna be covered with red flowers before long. And then uh, back here, got some bearded iris. There are the uh, azaleas from this direction, the viburnum in the background. And then uh, we'll move over into the central bed and finish things up, at least for our front yard video, and then we'll go to the backyard. Uh, here, again, we're, we're in that transition zone uh, time-wise. <clears throat> These were uh, grape hyacinths. They're all finished. Uh, I think you can see just a tiny little bit of residual color there on one of them, but that's about it. Otherwise, they've gone to seed, and they are finished. Absolutely beautiful flowers when they were in bloom. Here uh, we have a phlox, gorgeous thing, fully in bloom. That'll give us a, another uh, couple weeks, I think. And then we have this one called Candy Tuft. It's a, yeah, just kind of a delicate little woodland flower that has done really well for us in this bed. <clears throat> it doesn't get a, a excessive sun, but it, it does get a lot of sun. Uh, we've got our pansies here. We've got irises in the back. Uh, not yet ready to bloom, though. Um, they're coming along. Uh, we've got daylilies back here. We've got some uh, three big uh, uh, knockout roses, pink, red, and coral in color. And uh, these, you'd never guess, but these were eaten down pretty severely by the deer over the winter. I, I guess the uh, cold made this a tough year for deer, and they, they really uh, ate a lot of, uh, uh, they came out of the, the, the hills north of here and, and uh, got into a lot of gardens, ate up a lot of things. But fortunately, if they're, if they're eating knockout roses, it's not really a big problem because they, they come back pretty nicely. Here we have some more dianthus. We've got daylilies. Uh, tulips are all done in this area. Um, back here, more Asiatic lilies, and uh, they're all doing really well. Um, couple climbing roses and uh, these will start putting out flowers very soon. This one is kind of a pinkish orange color. It's just getting ready to bloom before too long. Uh, then uh, over here, Monarda, it just sort of grows at random and reseeds. Um, we have a bunch of them here. These will give us uh, some nice red flowers, also known as bee balm and uh, those will come out probably by about early June. So uh, we'll be waiting on that. Have some more dianthus scattered through here, and uh, that's really about it. So lots going on, as I say, it's a big transition period of the year. Uh, lots of new things coming out. Uh, really exciting to watch it from week to week. So stay with us every week. Hope the weather is good where you are, and until next time, happy gardening.